Chamber music. It's exactly what it says. Music designed for a chamber or a room rather than a large hall. So that means a handful of musicians, perhaps three or four, maybe seven or eight. But more important than the number of musicians is the way that the players or singers interact. In fact, if you'll think of chamber music as a conversation where musicians converse using music, then you'll have the right idea. To find out more, I went to Michael Shee, concertmaster of the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra. He's a passionate advocate for music, and he's played chamber music all over the world. But first, I wanted to ask him what it means to be a concertmaster of a major symphony orchestra. What does it mean to be a concertmaster? Wow. <laughs> that's a big, big topic, <laughs> that, I know, but in that, just a few that, words. That's a great question. What it really means is that um, I try to um, translate or carry out what the conductor wants. Um, if it's something that I can help with, um, with the change of bowing, with the change of strokes, with something so that we can all try to uh, bring out the music that the conductor wants um, to bring out. And uh, one of the big jobs um, of, of a concertmaster is that I have to set the bowings for every piece Which means... that we play, we play. And that just means that I need to make sure that we all go down at the same time and up at the same time. And it is a very time consuming process because it goes for every piece that we play. And, uh, and uh, even if it can be uh, some of the simplest to the most complicated, they all need bowings and they all need to be done correctly. And of course, everybody else also sees that um, Oftentimes, uh, you know, an orchestra's representative, shall we say, an artistic re representative rests with the concertmaster. So I do take a bow mm -hmm. in the beginning of each concert, not for myself, but it's really on behalf of all the musicians of the orchestra. And then, of course, I turn around, I'm responsible for um, uh, making sure that we are all tuned and ready to go. Michael Shee was preparing for a gala chamber music concert for the Van Clyburn series at Bass Hall. And guess what the title is? Michael Shee and Friends. A perfect title, because all of the musicians really are friends. We're sitting in this beautiful hall on this incredible stage, and you'll be playing an amazing concert here called Michael Shee and Friends just in a few days. Yes, I'm so excited. I, I feel incredibly honored and grateful to the Van Clyburn Foundation for having me and all my friends. And, and these and really are your friends, yes? Yes, we, we, I have known most of the people uh, on, on this program, some of them for more than 10 years. And uh, I, I must admit that when I was working on uh, the selections for this program, I was choosing these pieces not only because they are my all-time favorite from the chamber music genre, but also because I had in mind um, the friends that I was hoping to uh, call upon to join me in, in, this, uh, in this event. So if you were playing a solo concerto, mm -hmm. I would think it's probably fair to say that you're very conscious about sending that music out to the audience, and especially in a large hall like this. Yet chamber music is very much an interplay. And are you going to be sort of jostling the difference between your communication and audience communication? How does that work? Ah, I see. Well, you know, that's a, one of the beauties of a bass hall is the acoustics is so incredible. And the projection is so clear to the audience. And we are really fortunate in Fort Worth to have such a beautiful hall. So when we play chamber music on stage, um, we don't have to consciously work towards a projecting sound because it will be projecting. Mm -hmm. And this hall also, when we play very soft, it does not disappear, but rather I have felt that when I sit in the audience and listening to chamber music concerts here in Bass Hall, I, f I feel being drawn in when it's very soft, when, 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 the, when the playing becomes that much, shall we say, intimate. The entire hall becomes more drawn in to the, to the music making. The substance of chamber music is exactly the things you've talked about. Mm -hmm. It's usually uh, envisioned for specific players by composers, very often, yes? Yes. It's some of the most challenging music possible to perform. 
It brings out things that orchestral playing or solo playing will never bring out in a musician. And it's going to be, it seems to me that this program is kind of a, an intersection of all of these lives, all of this around this tiny time frame where you get to express all of this. Um, tell us a little, if you will, about what it means to, for a musician to play chamber music. Yes, I think chamber music is very special because, um, you know, each one of us expresses our own voice in chamber music. And each one of us is equal partner in chamber music. Um, when we have a sextet, each person has a say over how we're going to play this piece. Um, it's very personal, and um, we are able to uh, control and listen and uh, interact and interplay in all the parts that makes it a whole. And um, I think that each aspect, uh, shall we say, of, of music making has its own challenges, of course. You know, being a soloist is, mm -hmm. is, is incredibly challenging, and being an orchestra musician is also incredibly challenging, because not only are we trying to uh, make music, but we are trying to fit within the vision of the uh, conductor on the podium, and we're trying to be uniform with one another within a big section, in, in, in especially in a string section. And uh, so I think that, that that is a different challenge. And um, in chamber music, I, what, I, what I have always loved about chamber music was that we play each, each piece differently every time. Sometimes we'll explore new things. You know, in my, in my quartet days, um, at the height of it, we played about 160, 170 concerts a year. Mm -hmm. And we traveled all over the country. And we went to Europe, we went to Central America, we went to Asia. And occasionally, you know, we repeat the same pieces, let's say, three or four times within a week in different locations. And um, yet, each time, we find something different, something new, even just at the spur of the moment. And when that happens, everybody reacts. And it's like we had always rehearsed it. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's because people are so in tune, in a way, uh, to each other's movements. Um, the knowledge of one another's tiniest leaning forward or going backwards or gesture here and there, it sends a message to the rest of the group, OK, this person is about to go faster here. It's about to take a little time here and then everybody breathes together. It's a true collaborative work um, and, is, and very instinctual in a way that we get to react and, and respond. So when you have a group of friends that have been playing together for a long time, it adds that dimension to the music making so we can be a little bit more spontaneous. I mean, obviously we're not always. I mean, you know, we have to practice, we have to do it, and yeah. we do it. I mean, when it's a retard, we get it all together. When, it, when we accelerate and get faster, we have to make sure that we stay together. And those things that we practice over and over and over, just many, many times and many, many hours that we spend in rehearsals. But in the small things like this, we can afford to have a, oh, spontaneous moment or two in the concert and it makes it that more gratifying to us to play. And um, it's, it's that extra dimension of chamber music that makes it quite fun. <laughs>